Okay, so this video we're talking about concentration and what concentration is all about, and we're also going to get into dose, uh, toxicity, and lethal dose. So concentration, what is it? So percent, when we think of percent, we usually think of something, um, some number per 100, okay? So a percent would be like if I had 30% of my test, that means I got 30 uh, points out of 100 possible points on my test, okay? So 30 parts per 100. Um, so in concentration terms, what that might mean is uh, 30 grams out of 100 grams, let's say, for instance. Um, or maybe it's only 1 gram out of 100 grams. So that would be then uh, a 1% um, concentration. Uh, if this was a solution, maybe it's 1% solution. Um, often we see something like uh, 3 grams per 100 grams, so a 3% solution of hydrogen peroxide. Okay, So we, we see this uh, frequently around us. Numbers that we don't see as much, um, at least at home, is parts per million and parts per billion. Okay, so this here is million, and this one is billion. Okay, um, we can also get parts per trillion. Um, so what that is, exactly the same thing, just different numbers. So now instead of having something per 100, we've got per million. So uh, a 1 ppm concentration would have one part... So let's say it's one, um, no. one gram out of a million grams. Okay, one out of a million. So it's a pretty small concentration. Okay, and in billion, same thing. If we had one ppb, it would be one out of a billion. So now we can see what that number would look like in our calculator if we wanted to. It's a pretty small concentration. Um, so an example of that might be uh, one milligram of salt out of a one thousand um, gram container. So uh, this is also a kilogram, so one milligram per one kilogram. Okay, this is a part, one part per million because milli is the same as 0 0.001 grams, and a kilogram is a thousand grams, so if we get our units to be the same all the way throughout, we have to multiply by a thousand to get my decimal over here, so a thousand up top and a thousand on the bottom, so now we get one out of a million, okay? So one milligram of salt out of a one thousand gram box or container of salt uh, is going to be one part per million. Now, to give you an idea of how much that is, this, it's hard to see the number on this scale, but this is approximately one gram of salt. Okay, now most of us, I think, have seen a kilogram box of salt, just a standard kitchen size box of salt you can get from a grocery store. It's got that little metal spigot here on the side. Okay, so this this is a one kilogram box, and this is one gram worth. Okay, so one gram is a thousand milligrams. So if we were to cut this up into a thousand little piles of salt, that would be one milligram out of this whole kilogram box of salt. Pretty small concentration. Okay, parts per billion, same thing, even smaller. Parts per trillion even smaller. A trillion. A one with 12 zeros behind it. Okay, So part per trillion is pretty small concentration. So some chemicals, this is where we talk. We talk about parts per million, parts per billion, parts per trillion even in some of these chemicals um, because some things just really exist in a really, really, really small concentration. Um, okay, so that's what a concentration is talking about um, uh, in this instance at least. So if we talk about toxicity, well, what is toxicity? Toxicity is about the ability to cause harm to an organism, okay? So causing harm to an organism. So it might be to us, or maybe it's to a plant, or um, some other animal or uh, insect of some sort, okay? So an animal. So ability to cause harm to an organism. So, so what? Some things are more toxic than others, but also 
it's all about the dose or doses. Okay, so sometimes all we need is one dose and it's too much. And that's called an acute, uh, an acute form of toxicity. All we need is one dose and it's over the edge and we're done. Um, other times it's chronic. So an example of an acute dose might be um, getting a really, really strong, concentrated, powerful whiff of uh, the fumes that come off of mixing uh, chlorine bleach with ammonia. Okay, um, If we get too much of that in one shot, uh, it'll knock us out. And if we get even more than that, depending on the dose, um, it could kill us. Same thing with chlorine gas. Okay, Deadly stuff, mustard gas, this is what they used in war. Um, this kills. Okay, so an acute, it's all about the dose. All it takes is one shot, and it's game over. Um, chronic is where we get just a little bit of exposure, a little bit, a little dose at a time, over a long period of time. Okay, so an example of that might be lead. Okay, I'm not talking about pencil lead. Pencil lead is actually not lead. It's graphite, which is carbon. I'm talking about real lead, so like fishing weight lead, or um, lead weights, or the lead inside of the vest for uh, an x-ray uh, protection vest. Okay, so lead... Um, if we touch that and it gets into our skin, gets into our bloodstream, it doesn't really do any harm initially, um, but a little bit over time, over a lifetime, if we do, if we have a lot of lead exposure, um, it could cause some serious illness and in some cases um, some brain problems and, uh, and it could even cause lead poisoning and death because it affects organs. Okay, so it's all about the dose. And uh, some is acute, some are chronic, and either way, Toxic things cause harm to organisms, okay? So, what are some of the other factors that, are, that change with this? How come some people are more affected than others? Why are little kids or babies more, um, more susceptible compared to an adult? Uh, well, it depends on body mass, okay? Overall size and mass distribution of the body, how much muscle, how much fat, how much bone mass, all this kind of stuff. Um, the other thing that is important to consider is the metabolism rate. So, metabolism is how fast or how uh, efficient our body is able to convert the foods and the um, basically the chemicals, the nutrients that we eat into energy and then use that energy. So if we have a really high metabolism, we convert that energy and then we're able to use it. And, and, um, and in some cases, this is bad because it means that our cells are more active and the blood, blood flow is flowing really good and, and some chemicals will transfer faster through the bloodstream into the brain and cause death and or other organs and things like that. Um, sometimes the slow metabolism rate um, is not so good when it comes to toxic things because the toxic things will just sit there and um, cause uh, local damage wherever it is. Maybe it's in the stomach or in the intestine or something like that. And it'll just sit there without getting distributed through the body and then eventually out through waste in the toilet. Um, so it depends on the toxin that we're talking about. If we already have other toxins in our body, uh, they might also have caused some other complications. So those are some other things to consider. Uh, mercury, uh, HG, sometimes some people have this in their mouth in the form of silver fillings, okay? The silver amalgam stuff that the dentists use, they don't use it as much anymore, but they used to use it a lot. Um, that's mercury, and it is toxic to the body. It causes problems in the brain. Um, so our lifestyle, again, this one is somewhat related to uh, metabolism. Right, and so the better lifestyle we have, the overall health that we might have, um, our immune system might be up or down. All these kinds of things are factors that will uh, dictate um, how, I guess, how resistant our body is to some of these toxins. Toxins. Okay, so here's an example chart of some example toxins. Um, so these are all minerals. Um, so things that you've heard of, things you maybe haven't heard of, but these are all minerals that are in the environment or in uh, chemicals that are sometimes around us. Um, so arsenic, barium, cadmium, chromium, so that's like chromium they use on the bumper. Um, trivalent is a, is a specific uh, crystal structure, st specific form of chromium. Um, here's another different form. Uh, lead, we just talked about lead and how bad lead can be. Uh, all these are toxic to the body. Okay? Mercury causes problems, selenium, and silver. Now some of these we need a tiny bit in our body for different functions in our brain and our organs, um, but there's a level, okay, a maximum permitted level that says, okay, whoa, too much. Um, and these numbers are all in parts per billion, okay, see that right there, PPB, 
So parts per billion. So this is uh, five parts in a billion. So what does that mean? Well, that means if I had uh, a swimming pool with a billion gallons of water in it, um, five gallons of water would be actually arsenic. Okay, so um, barium then is a thousand parts per billion, but we can also write that as, um, if we multi uh, divide by a thousand, as one part per million. All right, so barium, our bodies are a little bit more resistant, it doesn't affect us quite the same. One of the reasons is that barium is such a large atom, mm. amongst other reasons, and it's also very um, very stable, it doesn't react very well with things, and it's not soluble with water, so it just kind of passes through relatively easily. Um, but it is still toxic, higher than this uh, 1 ppm. Uh, cadmium, again, 0 0.017 ppb, well, if we, again, divide by 1,000, that's the same as 17 parts per trillion, right? So it's a pretty small amount of cadmium that we're allowed um, before it becomes toxic in our bodies. Uh, chromium, lead, mercury, selenium, silver, okay, so these all have different numbers. And uh, and so these are some examples. There are lots of other things, a lot of chemicals. Uh, if we look through the MSDS, for all the different chemicals out there, uh, they all list the, um, the levels that are safe uh, for us, okay? And so that brings us to our final thing, which is the lethal dose, okay? Lethal means deadly or going to die, um, not good, and the 50 means that it's only lethal in 50% of the population that it was tested on, okay? So that's kind of a hit and miss, what do you mean 50%, okay? So remember we talked about these other factors like body uh, metabolism rate, body mass, and those kinds of things, okay? So in 50% of the population Oftentimes it was like mice or rats or something like that. Uh, they tested and it gave uh, death. Okay, and so these are some numbers pulled out of the book talking about the LD50 for some different things. Uh, the botulinum toxin, uh, this bacteria is what's um, responsible for botulism. You may have heard of that term. Botulism is a nasty little disease and, uh, and it can cause death. And so if we have... 0 0.00000003 parts per million, so that's like a tiny, tiny, tiny bit of this stuff, okay, it'll, it'll, uh, not be good. It'll give us botulism and probably lead to death in 50% of the people that try it, so I don't want to be playing Russian roulette with that stuff. Tetanus, okay, most people have a tetanus shot vaccination against this bacteria, um, but if you don't get your boosters and you're not up to date, um, all it takes is 0 0.00005 of these per million other um, pieces of water, I guess you could say, or compared to other particles, uh, and this stuff will cause death in 50%. Uh, dioxin, which is a contaminant in herbicides. Nicotine, okay, look at this, 0 0.86 ppm causes death in 50% of the people. Strychnine is a pesticide, also may have heard that used as a poison. Uh, solanine, not sure what that is exactly, but found in potatoes. Um, so if we eat too many potatoes, it could cause death. Chances are the amount of solanine or solanine in a potato is extremely small. Um, so you'd have to eat probably like, I don't know, a whole bag full of potatoes. So you'd probably die from other problems. Um, Chloridane is another insecticide. So these are all different poisons and toxins and chemicals that obviously have problems and cause death. Um, so just some examples. LD50, okay, this number is talking about sudden, well, maybe not sudden, but usually probably painful with nasty side effects kind of death um, in 50% of people. So the safe place is to stay far away from the LD50 level. We don't even want to get close to the LD50 level um, because, again, these are uh, approximate. Um, so what if they're off? Uh, so we don't even want to get close to some of these numbers. Um, so just things to think about when we're looking at MSDS and dealing with different um, uh, chemicals or cleaners or uh, things in the environment around us, okay? So that's the lesson for today, and we'll see you later.